Okay, Brendan, this is uh, Jupiter Ascending, a movie review. I looked online last night, and there are only three reviews for this movie. Nobody had a clue as to what it's about. None of the, and one of the reviews was a panel of four reviewers. Nobody has a clue as to what this movie is about. So we are going to discuss what it's about. Now, all three reviewers, actually, I have to say, six reviewers, four on one review and a single reviewer on each of the others. One of them was very funny, except that he used a lot of profanity, but he was really funny. It was a terrible movie. You know. uh, Brooke and, uh, and June and I went to see it last night. As a movie goes, it was a terrible movie. And they were panning it as a movie. But the message was very clear to those that had ears to hear and eyes to see. So we are going to be the reviewer who's going to tell the story about what it means, because they were all there saying, I don't know what it means, and they were actually making jokes about it, not knowing what it means. The meaning, you see, brethren, there's been a, a major push against Christianity uh, in this nation for quite a few years now to, to wipe it out, to wipe Christianity out of the public view. So many people think that we have a secular culture, a secular society here, but we really don't. <laughs> we have another religion that has moved in to take the place of Christianity. Mythology is a religion. Mythology is a religion, or at least a part of the, re of the religion of the ancient Greek and Roman religion. Mythology is, is the counterpart of the doctrine of Christ coming from the mind of the other side. Now, I understand it, and I'm going to help you all to understand it, because we know the doctrine of Christ. So for the first time, I heard mention of the doctrine of Lucifer just a couple of days ago on a, on a video that I was watching. I didn't know there was a doctrine of Lucifer. So the bottom line is this. There is an, esos there is an esoteric truth about our existence, where we came from, who we are, what our, potential, what our potential is, and what's waiting for us as mankind has now approached into, the, into spiritual puberty. And we're now capable of spiritual reproduction. So the message is coming out a little differently depending on the spirit that's preaching it, but the message is the same, the esoteric, esoteric doctrine of the human race. And we hear it one way from the spirit of Christ, and we hear it another way from the spirit of Antichrist. And Antichrist is divided. Different spirits under him pre preaching this message in a different way. But that's what the movie was all about. It was actually a very religious movie. If you want to, if you want to use that word religious, and I use that word religious to emphasize to you that Jupiter Ascending is a movie that, that was promoting a, a doctrine, a religious doctrine, and the doctrine of a belief, of a religion. It was a religious movie. Okay. And all of these intelligent people, Graduates from Ivy League school, some of them, don't have a clue as to what they're listening to any more than they would understand if they sat in a meeting like this. But it's a very serious business, brethren. When you sit in on a, on, on a lecture, especially when it's a video lecture of a religion, you get the seeds of that religion. We're going, I'm going to preach this. Um, I had some conflict about preaching it. And the conflict was this. How am I going to preach this that the people going on to the internet? Because there's already been hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of hits on those three reviewers of people wanting to know what this movie is about. How should I preach this? Should I preach it to the world? And the answer is, I can preach it to the world. I have to preach it the way I preach it to my students here, which means it's going to be long and drawn out and detailed. And it's up to the Lord 
And also I was thinking I shouldn't scare everybody by starting out saying what I just said. But I can't do that. I have to preach the way I preach. And it's up to the Lord to get the people to listen to it. Or maybe it's not up to the Lord. Maybe it's up to the people to not be turning off the turning off their computers right now, to not be shutting down the file right now. This movie is a religious movie. Even the, with the place where the wedding took place looked to me very much like the hall where the British have their marriages, and I didn't have time to go online and, and, and remind myself of the name of that hall, which is, I guess is the big church. Does anybody know the name of the, of the main church in England where they had their weddings, where they had their royal weddings? I didn't take the time to look it up. That's what it looked like to me. Okay. So, uh, let me just finish this, this section of what I have to say to you. It's a religious message, and its intention is to seed you with the spirit of the religion, because every religion has a spirit behind it. Religion is the worship of a spirit. And mankind needs to know, especially the Christian world, especially the Christian world needs to know that there's nothing new under the sun and that we're back in the garden and the woman is being seduced all over again. Our hope in this ministry is that the Lord Jesus Christ will intervene before another total disaster happens. Because I want to tell you something, brethren. I want to tell you something terrible is about to happen. Because this religion is about to happen to, to the Christian world that thinks that they're so smart that they don't have to go to church anymore and they don't have to, they don't have to have a relationship with God and they don't need any help or whatever, whatever is going through their mind as a result of the seduction. Something terrible is about to happen. Whatever name you want to put on it, there's another spirit. It's not the spirit of God. And one group says it's the spirit of Osiris, another says it's Apollyon, another says it's this one. I don't care what name you call it. There's a spirit out there and it's not from God and it wants to marry you. And it wants to bring forth its child in you. And the seduction is underway. The serpent brought forth its child in the woman. And we are that child. Humanity today is that child, that hybrid child. And God, Jehovah, has sent Jesus to rescue us. And at the very point of our rescue, the serpent is added again. The serpent is added again. And the serpent wants to take us before Jehovah can rescue us through the Lord Jesus Christ. And our only hope of it not happening again is the Lord Jesus Christ marrying Christ Jesus and the few people that he's being birthed in and destroying the plans of the enemy and a very high spiritual place where the warfare is one against one. See down here it's millions of people but the actual warfare is going to take place in a high spiritual place where it's the Lord Jesus Christ against as far as we've been taught here in Nimrod. I don't care what name you give it. As, as you descend, the numbers of, of people or, or entities spread out, spread out, spread out. Down here in this world, we're talking about millions of people. We're talking about millions of people. And when I say something terrible is about to happen, it's already happening, but it's happening behind the scenes. It was had to be at least a year ago. I told you about it. There have been conferences everywhere about women that are being uh, are being raped from within. People gathering together to comfort each other because they don't know, there's no help for them out there. Okay. Well, something's about to be born. Something's about to be born. See, that's a, that's a subculture right now. Your average citizen, Susie Homemaker, and her husband and their two children, one boy and one girl, or their two and a half children, whatever the, whatever the statistics say. 
They don't believe any of this stuff. That there are women out there being raped from within. That there are alien abductions. They don't believe any of this stuff. See? They're sitting home behind their nice white picket fence. And they're planning on their next trip to China or to Prague or wherever they're going. See? And they're saving up for their new car or their new SUV and they're planning on their children's college. It's almost springtime here. The new college class is coming in. Parents are going to be traveling around to, with their children to investigate what colleges their children are going to go to. They're going to be going to graduations. And they don't believe any of this stuff. See? But something terrible is about to happen. And the, the, the child of this entity is about to be born and burst forth on the public scene where nobody can deny it anymore. I honestly don't know what it will look like. Will it look like will it look like baby aliens with wings? Maybe it will. I don't know. But it's about to burst forth, burst forth through this veil of denial which is getting thinner and thinner and thinner and affect every single human being, certainly in Christendom, if not in the whole world. Something that nobody can deny anymore. The evil's coming out of Hollywood. It's coming out of the TV. It's more subtle than the TV. The Hollywood's getting very bold, brother. It's coming in the books, Twilight. Shades, 50 shades of gray. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. And the whole foolish woman, the foolish woman, Christendom, they think, they think they've been liberated. They've been liberated from the restraints of Christianity, primarily sexual restraints. They all think that they're free, see. And something terrible is about to happen. So, if you're still listening to me, I know that the people here are still listening to me. If you're listening to me through the internet and you're still listening to me, let me tell you what that movie was all about. And maybe Jesus will have mercy on you, because he's your only hope. Jesus Christ is your only hope. Because if you don't join yourself to him, or if you don't let him join himself to you, the other guy is going to join himself to you, and you are going to have his child. And you'll be then dominated by that child. And it won't be pleasant. I just don't have a full vision yet of what it's going to be. But it cannot be good, brethren. And I want to tell you the finale of this movie. The finale that struck alarm in my heart. I listened to the whole movie and my initial evaluation of it was this. Well, it's not as bad as the other movies that I've seen where I, where I told you there was a spirit of death on those movies. I've reviewed a few movies and I told you there was a spirit of death on those movies. I didn't perceive any spirit of death on it. The, the, the female lead, was, um, whose name is Jupiter, by the way, was very fetching and, and, and emotional and alive. Okay. No spirit of death on the movie. I just saw that it was the, it was spiritual principles of esoteric reality, of course coming from a twisted point of view, and I was just going along with it saying. But that final scene, brethren, that final scene, when that werewolf spouted his wings, there's something about those wings, brethren, and not one of these reviewers mentioned that final scene, which was the catch call of the whole thing, listen to me. That thing sprouted those wings. My, my heart grasped. Christ Jesus in me just went, oh. Wings are power. Wings are dominion. Everybody that saw that scene, that didn't have... Christ Jesus inside of them, they went, oh. you better start breaking those curses right now. And for the people here, I break those curses over you. In Jesus' name, I rip those wings out of that. 
thing. I ripped them where I did it last night. I ripped them, I burned them in the fire. And I destroyed the entity that sprouted them. I want to tell you something. That image that not one reviewer even commented on, that thing, that thing that has the power to birth a child in you with wings like that, got inside of your mind like a seed. Everyone that saw it, thousands of people that have seen that movie, that seed got inside of you. And the more you didn't know what was going on, the more you thought it was just a movie, maybe you liked it. Maybe you didn't go, oh. maybe you said, wow, isn't that wonderful? You've got the seed. Now, like every other, like every other attempt at conception, if we want to look at human conception, every seed that's planted doesn't sprout. Some people are more susceptible than others, and I don't know how long the birth, I don't know how long the gestation period is. I don't know how long the gestation period is. But I'm telling you, that seed, projected seed, how do we get the seed of, of Christ Jesus? Through the foolishness of preaching. I want to tell you, that image, that image is in your mind doing everything within its power to reproduce itself within you if you've seen it. So, let's take a look at this. Let's do this right. Jupiter ascending. What does that mean? Jupiter ascending. Jupiter, Jupiter is the, um, the name of the young woman who's the female lead. She's really the lead of the whole movie. Why in the world, which, well, and it's talking about her spiritual ascension. The movie is about the spiritual ascension of a young woman named Jupiter. And she represents the whole human race because this movie is a religious movie attracting all of the AWOL Christians who now have no protection whatsoever and the Jews. I'm sure the Kabbalists know what it's about, but the, the secular Jews, the Jews that, are, that practice the religion but are not into Kabbalah, that's over the esoteric doctrine and the Christians. I have a feeling any any I have a feeling any Indian or Buddhist, anyone in this country visiting, either either Indian or, 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 or citizens of another country where they practice Buddhism, or, or even if they're citizens here, any Indian or Buddhist person with spiritual background saw what that movie was. It was evil. It was evil because the whole, the whole um, climax was to seed you without your knowing it. It was a rape. And anyone with any kind of spiritual background, if they saw that scene at the end, would have known what it was. But Christendom and secular Judaism have been dumbed down. It's just amazing the shape that we're in. And this is one small voice crying out. I don't know at what point the Lord will intervene. I just know that the attempt to take over humanity must fail and that the kingdom of God is coming. Aside from that, I'm just watching and waiting and watching. And the Lord told me this morning, so when is when are you going to appear? When are you going to appear? The Lord said he has begun to appear. I'm talking about the second coming now. The Lord Jesus has begun to appear. He's begun to appear with wisdom. Now, very few people have heard his voice. So this year, he's putting his wisdom on YouTube. And he's reaching out to the people through movie reviews. When will you appear in power, Lord? 
I haven't heard any answer. But I want to tell you this, brethren. Repentance is required. You don't get rescued unless you're crying out for rescue. And the citizens of the, of Christ, of the Christian world are not crying out for rescue. They're just loving these movies. They're just, they're just loving the seduction of their mind. They don't know that they need help. So the chances that things are going to get much, 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 much worse are great because the Lord's not going to respond until the people are crying out for help. That's the truth. So I would like to start by finding out who Jupiter is. The movie is about a woman, a young woman named Jupiter, about her spiritual ascension. And I believe she represents all of humanity. So let's take a look at Jupiter. Since this is a religious movie, right, and Jupiter is one of the gods of this religion, let's try and find out who Jupiter is. So Jupiter is a planet, brethren. You emailed all of this material. I'm just going to read this to you. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the Sun and the largest planet in the solar system. So Jupiter is big. It is a giant planet with a mass one thousandth of that of the Sun. So it has less mass than, it's very large, but it's ethereal, okay? Its mass is less than the Sun. But it's two and a half times that of all the other planets in the solar system combined. All of the other planets in the solar system. So Jupiter is a very powerful planet. What are we talking about? We're talking about the people, because everyone in Christendom is not equally fertile. We're talking about the more fertile members of Christendom who are most prepared to give birth and produce the child. Jupiter means, uh, Jupiter is known as Zeus in Greek mythology. Well, I'm not going to read that now because I want to just do the planet and then we'll get into the mythology. How much would you weigh on Jupiter? If you travel to Jupiter on vacation, you would be very heavy. If you weigh 70 pounds on Earth, on Jupiter you would weigh 185 pounds. This is because Jupiter is such a large planet and so has more gravity. So we're talking about people who are born with spiritual potential. There's going to, the, the, the harvest of spiritual offspring is going to come in in stages. The first harvest is being prepared right now. The scripture tells us the first harvest is the barley harvest. Every, every human being is not equally uh, fertile. So, but the most fertile people represented by Jupiter are now being seeded. Jupiter is by far the largest planet in our solar system. The Earth could fit inside of Jupiter more than 1,000 times. Jupiter is a very stormy planet. People that are spiritual, they experience a lot of spiritual storms. Everybody here knows that. There are storms found throughout the atmosphere, and most of the storms seem to never end. The many different cloud formations and storms in the atmosphere also make Jupiter a very colorful planet. So we see some of we're, now we're talk, what we're talking about here, brethren, is the first group of human beings and specifically Christians are being targeted in this country and in the Christian world. I know for some reason, I don't, I don't see, I don't see this uh, seduction going towards the Hindu world, I don't, unless I'm not aware of it. See? They want the Christians, brethren, because they don't want the Christians to produce Christ. See? So some people are naturally 
heavy with spiritual potential. They're born that way, the female spirituality. And then some Christians, uh, some people, have developed spirituality through the Holy Ghost. I don't see them going after the Hindus, but you never know. They want the Christians, they want to stop us from producing Christ Jesus. You know, that's what the that's what the Muslims do when they come in and, and conquer a nation. They take the women and impregnate them and raise the women up. They marry them and make them have Muslim children. They stop the women from producing Hindu children or Christian children. They take the women, they marry them and, and make them have babies and raise them up uh, Muslim. That's what's happening. That's why the Christians are the target. Christians and the Jews, but see, I think mostly the Christians. Jupiter's great red spot is visible in the picture above, which I don't think you have the picture here. It is where a giant storm has been raging for at least 300 years. So we're, we're continuously in spiritual warfare with continuous storms raging. People that are spiritual have a very stormy life. One day they're up, the next day they're down. You never know what's bothering you. You don't know what's hitting you. Yesterday I had a great day. I felt wonderful. I woke up this morning, everything was different, but it must have had something to do with the movie that I saw. Who knows what goes on at night when I'm sleeping? So there's a, a storm that's been going on for 300 years on Jupiter. This red spot is called the Eye of Jupiter because of its shape. The storm's super hurricane winds blow across a, a, an area larger than the Earth. A lot of these storms are because we experience other people's feelings. We are ascended. We have a, a, we have a presence in a higher world where we experience other people's emotions. The storms come from emotions, brethren. Jupiter is considered a gas giant because it does not have a solid surface. Under its atmosphere is a large liquid ocean of hydrogen and water. Nothing solid there. What lies in between that ocean and the atmosphere? This is very interesting. Actually, there is no, nothing in between. The atmosphere slowly gets thicker and thicker until it becomes a part of the ocean. In other words, Jupiter's ocean has no surface in which you could float a boat. The sky becomes the ocean. So the ocean typifies Satan. The sky typifies the Son of God. So they're one, Satan and the Son of God, one, the evil Elohim. Did you know that Jupiter has rings? They are faint and are only able to be viewed when Jupiter passes in front of the sun. This is because the light from the sun lights them up for us to see here on Earth. There are three rings in all, and their names are Gossamer, main and halo. Jupiter has 50 official moons and 12 provisional moons. I thought that was so interesting. So, so we see if Jupiter represents the body of believers, okay, that means there are, there are 50, I don't want to get into that too deep. I know Kabbalah says there are 70 nations, 70 main categories of people. So this seems to me to be saying 50, but I don't want to get into this too deeply because it's really not our message for today. You can see four of Jupiter's moons with a pair of binoculars at night, blah, blah, blah. Jupiter spins really fast. It only takes 10 hours to go from night to day on Jupiter. So time speeds up as we get more spiritual. Time speeds up. I wake up in the morning, I blink, and it's 4 o'clock. But as soon as I hit 4 o'clock, to me the day's over. Four o'clock, I have so many things to do for the rest of the day. When I see four o'clock, my day is gone. Time speeds up when you're spiritual. You can never get, you can never ever get everything done. Mm -hmm. You become a very busy person. You can never get, ever, ever, ever get everything done. Okay. So, uh, for this reason, its middle has been stretched out rather than rounded, short and fat. Kind of like when someone spins pizza dough, blah, blah. The planet shape is called an oblate spheroid. Okay. So 
what else are we going to look at then? Jupiter, uh, brethren, is, um, it represents the, or is the same name in another language as Zeus. It represents Zeus. It did say here in what we just read, Jupiter known as Zeus in Greek mythology overthrew his father Saturn to become king of the gods. He then split the universe with his brothers Neptune and Pluto. So we see a trinity there. <sighs> Jupiter ascending. Okay. Zeus was a god of the sky and ruler of the Olympian gods. So, well, let me tell you this up front. Jupiter, it's the story about this naive, it's the story about this naive human woman. What, what are you talking about, Sheila? This is who she's go, going to become. She's going to become Zeus. She's becoming a part of the body of Zeus. And everyone that has this experience that Jupiter had is becoming a part of the body of Zeus, which is being built in this world right now. The spirit of Zeus is coming down. Susan, could you make it a little warm in here? The spirit of Zeus is coming down, or the spirit of Osiris, whatever name you want to put on it. And just like there's a body of Christ, is going to be building up a body of human beings through which that spirit can make a, can make a home. And this woman, Jupiter, in this movie, was the first one. And everyone else, especially those that saw that final scene, received the image on their mind which is a seed that will make them one with Jupiter. The name of the movie should have been the development of the body of Zeus. The body of Zeus. The body of Lucifer. Whatever name you want to put on it. That should, is that what the name of the movie should be. And this young woman, naive woman, is the first one. Okay, so Zeus was the, the God. Now, this is going to be the body of Zeus. Brethren, we're talking, this is a religious movie. You watch it, especially if you like it, if you are taken by it, and you don't have a clue as to what's going on, so that to the point that you're resisting it, you are being initiated into the religion and the body of Zeus. Zeus was the god of the sky and ruler of the Olympian gods. He overthrew his father Cronus and then drew lots with his brothers Poseidon and Hades in order to decide who would succeed their father on the throne. Well, brethren, that sounds just like the, what we're learning in the Doctrine of Christ. It was the female part of the creation who overthrew her father overthrew her, her, her superior, and went away. To, and drew lots. She, she, can, she, um, uh, she, um, what's the word I want to use? She had a relationship with the snake, and uh, they had to decide who would succeed. Who would succeed Adam, who died? Because when the woman departed from Adam, he died. So. When the woman, the woman was now with the snake, who was going to be the primary entity, the snake or the woman? They drew lots, you see, to decide who would be the primary, the primary, uh, uh, who would provide the primary qualities of the race that they were bringing into existence. Would it be the nature of the snake or the nature of the woman? And the answer is the nature of the snake. The woman was naive, the snake was evil. All of mankind has an evil side. Some of us are both naive and evil. This is religion. This is religious doctrine, brethren. Zeus won the draw and became the supreme ruler of the gods. Okay, so the snake won the draw, and the snake's nature entered into the race of people called Cainites. Okay, all, all, of, all of whom, all of Cainites of whom had the potential to receive the mind of the, of the serpent and become a Nephilim. And the snake became the ruler of all the gods, all of the, all the Nephilim. 
as well as Lord of the Sky and of Rain. So these Cainites who were completed, they ruled over nature, they ruled over the sky, they ruled over the earth. Satan and Leviathan. Satan is the unconscious mind, Leviathan is the subconscious mind. And they ruled over the rain, the anointing. They could give it or withhold it as they pleased. His weapon was a thunderbolt, which he hurled at those who displeased or defied him, especially liars and oath breakers. Now this is interesting because it's imparting righteous qualities to the gods who only exist because of their rebellion against the one true God. But we know that there's both a good and evil side to Satan. There's a good and an evil side. And there are people that might not have anything of Christ that can rise up with a righteous spirit because that's a residue of the potential of the Malchus, the seed, the seed that was given to the earth to bring forth mankind. So all of you people out there on the internet, not my people here, but all of you people on the internet that may still be listening to me, that are choosing to believe or wondering if it's true that we're the seeds of aliens, the answer is that we are the seed, we are the fruit of the seed of the living God. Okay. The living God made a creation on a high spiritual plane in another dimension, and he gave a seed, and the seed, which was the beginning of the whole, of the whole creation, was the seed of his perfect life the seed of the perfect life of the living God, and it was a female seed. Now, if you want to call God an alien, you can, because you are not God, and neither am I. But these aliens that are these lizard aliens, you're not the seed of these lizard aliens, other than the original creation of God was corrupted and seduced by the snake. And yes, you do have alien DNA, you do have reptilian DNA, that's your father who is the snake. And, and the one living God made him too. So there's a good side and a bad side of these canines, these hybrids, the female aspect of the creation of God and the nature of the snake of the soul realm that was created to be under the authority of Adam, of Adam but got up on top of Adam and made him the woman. So we read about Zeus, he, he was righteous, he didn't like liars or oath breakers, so that was the nature of the, of the woman before the fall, seeping into, into mankind. We are the Canaanites. Not the Canaanites, but the Canaanites. He was married to Hera, but often tested her patience as he was infamous for his many affairs. So we see that Zeus was not so righteous after all, and that his main weakness had to do with his sexuality. It will be the downfall of mankind, brethren. There is no way we will be rescued until we get our sexual practices in line with what God has to say. Adultery is forbidden. Zeus, the presiding deity of the universe, <clears throat> that's that serpent, ruler of the skies and the earth, that's Satan and, and Leviathan, coming out of the serpent, emerging out of the serpent, was regarded by the Greeks as the god of all natural phenomena of the sky, the personification of the laws of nature, the ruler of the state, and finally the father of gods and men. That's who, that's who wants to bring his child forth in you. The body of Zeus, the creation that came into existence after the woman departed from the man and cohabited with the snake and brought forth an illegal, adulterous, uh, an illegal nation, which was the fruit, of, which is the fruit of adultery. That's the one that wants to put his seed in you, if you're still listening, all you people out there on the internet.
Using his shield, the Aegis, Zeus could create all natural phenomena, phenomena related to the air and the sky, such as storms, tempests, and intense darkness. At his command, mighty thunders would flash and lightnings would roll, wrecking havoc, or the skies would open to rejuvenate the earth with life-giving life water. This is Mother Nature. Nature. This world. Nature. God did not make this world, brethren. It's true. You want to call them aliens? The snake formed this world with the substance of God, with the righteous substance of God. It was stolen. The clay of God was stolen and this world was formed. Yes, and we were formed as a slave race, you see. God did not intend us to be a slave race. We were intended to be righteous in the feeling, righteous spiritual giants. But because the, 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 the creation was male and female, and the female departed from the male and married the snake, and a corrupt hybrid nation came into existence. And we are here. We were formed by the snake and the woman to be your slaves. But the Lord Jesus Christ, the, re the representative of the one and true living God, does not agree with your criminal behavior. The one who, who, who formed the original man that was corrupted is coming to take back his creation and to deliver us from the slavery that we are in to the powers that came into existence through the adultery of the woman and the snake. So you see, you have some truth, all you people out there on YouTube, you have some truth about us being a slave race. And yes, the church has it wrong. We're not in the image of God. We're, we were created to be in the image of God, but we're not there now. And we're in a form that was not formed by God. But the one true living God who created, who started this whole thing, is coming to take us back. And that you're not hearing from the aliens or whoever they are, whatever you want to call them. I'll tell you what they are. They're the fifth day creation. God, God worked for six days. These reptilians were created on the fifth day. Adam was created on the sixth day. The reptilians are older and smarter and wilder and wiser and stronger than mankind, but we have Jesus. As the personification of the operations of nature, he represented the grand laws of unchanging and harmonious order by which both the natural and the spiritual world was governed. He was the god of regulated time as marked by the changing of the seasons and the regular succession of day and night. In contrast to what his father Cronus represented before him, absolute time, i.e. eternity. So Adam before the fall represented absolute time, eternity. But this creation that exists today was the beginning of time. The creation brought forth by the combined woman and snake produced time. And uh, and a, a uh, temporary, a temporary formation. Adam originally was eternal. And this, this brings us to the whole plot of the movie. See? The snake, who's appearing today as the nature of fallen mankind, who's appearing today as Cain, by the way, the hero of the movie, he cannot keep the bodies alive. See, we found out recently that he's invisible. He's an invisible spirit. He needs bodies to dwell in. He cannot keep us alive. We die. See. And the father of the god Zeus ascertained that each deity performed their individual duty, punished their misdeeds, settled their disputes, and acted towards them on all occasions as their all-knowing counselor and mighty friend. So we know that there are pagan religions out there that have some, some rules, some righteous rules, as their counselor and their mighty friend. That's the titles of Jesus, brother. And 
all you smart people out there saying, well, they were there before Jesus was. The titles were there before Jesus was. The titles that Jehovah gave Jesus were there before Jesus appeared. But that doesn't make it legal for a, for, for a foreign god to acquire those titles. Because Jesus didn't come on the scene until after they came on the scene. The titles themselves are eternal. And they're in the very existence of the one true living God. Anyone that takes a title that exists in the one true living God is a thief. It didn't start with Jesus. You just heard about it with Jesus. The title was there. We are on time. Does anyone not know what I just said? Counselor, mighty friend. Counselor, Prince of Peace. It's, as the father of men, he took a paternal interest in the actions and well-beings of mortals. He watched over them with a tender solicitude, re rewarding truth, charity, and fairness, while severely punishing perjury and cruelty. Even the poorest and most fallen wanderer can find a powerful advocate in Zeus, for he, as a wise and merciful paternal figure, demanded that the wealthy inhabitants of the earth be attentive to the needs of their less fortunate fellow citizens. Sounds like Maitreya to me. See? Brethren, the whole plot of the movie is good aliens against bad aliens. The whole plot of the movie is good aliens against bad aliens. So you choose the good aliens, and you're still going to bring forth the devil's child. Does anyone not know what I just said? Good aliens versus bad aliens will trick you. It's a trick. It's a trick. Jesus said, no one is good but God. See? It's a trick. There is no such thing as good aliens. Jesus is your only hope. Because even the good aliens will destroy you as soon as they get what they want from you. So I don't know how much more time I'm going to spend on this. I don't know whether I'm feeling what other people in the meeting are feeling, but I feel um, oppressed to go on with the actual movie. It could be the people here just wanting to hear about the movie. So I think I'll leave this other information with you. Oh, I'll, just, I'll just give you this one other thing. Uh, Apollo, rather, because Apollo, we read about Apollo in the scripture. He is the angel that rules over the bottomless pit, Apollo. And Apollo is the offspring of Zeus. Listen. The Lord Jesus Christ is, has an offspring. He's bringing forth Christ Jesus in you, right? Zeus has an offspring. The name of the offspring of Zeus in you is Apollo. The counterpart, the man of sin, that will be born in you if it's not Christ Jesus born in you. He's Apollo, the offspring of Zeus, Zeus being Jupiter. So the name of the movie, Jupiter Ascending, you know, is talking about this, it's really talking about the sun, the sun of Jupiter in you, causing spiritual ascension so that that offspring in you, who we know then their name is Apollo, can be married by Zeus or Jupiter, whatever name you want to give them, so that you can be completed in the nature of the Antichrist. Does anyone not know? Am I making any sense? Do you know what I'm talking about? All you people out there on YouTube that don't know what I'm talking about, in order for the uh, for the spirit of the religion that's being preached to you to, uh, to possess you, because the spirit of any religion that you have possesses you. The spirit of Jesus Christ possesses you. The spirit of Jehovah possesses you. Religion is a relationship with the spirit. So the spirit of Jupiter, which is the spirit of Zeus, in order for him to possess you, has to first impregnate you with his child. Because there's no way for a permanent union between a spirit and a human unless that spirit has its representative, its child inside of the human. 
through the planting of a seed. So in the case of the Lord Jesus Christ, he's planting his seed in us, and Christ Jesus is being born in us, and the Lord Jesus is coming to marry Christ Jesus in us. And then the whole man becomes a powerful supernatural being, and the whole man is saved. On the other side, because there's only one esoteric doctrine, there's only one esoteric truth, maybe hearing it in a little twisted way, from, depending on the spirit you're hearing it from, but there's only one truth. So on the other side, we have another spirit. You want to call it Osiris, you want to call it Nimrod, you want to call it Jupiter, you want to call it Zeus, you can call it anything you want. It's the spirit of the fallen creation. It's the spirit of the creation that came into existence when the woman separated from the man and made a new alliance with the snake. That's the other spirit. The woman aligned with the snake. It used to be the man and the woman. There was a man and there was a spirit in the man. The man died because the woman departed from him and joined with another male, the snake. And that's, that's Zeus or Jupiter or Antichrist or Lucifer, whatever name you want to give it. And he wants to join with you because that's what religion is. It's, it's a relationship with the spirit. And in order for him to join with you, he has to put his seed in you so that his, his offspring can grow in you because that spirit of Jupiter or Zeus, or, or Zeus has to join with his life in you. So the big push is to seed humanity, in particular Christianity, with the life of Zeus or Jupiter or Antichrist or, 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 or Osiris or whatever you want to call him. He's the opposite of God. He's in place of God. And the name of the child in you, the name of Jupiter's child in you, is Apollyon. And the Bible tells us he's the angel that rules over the bottomless pit. And every man is about, what is the bottomless pit? The bottomless pit is the place where creation is taking place. So we have creation taking place on the macrocosm. And it's also taking place on the microcosm. Each individual is an example of creation taking place. The bottomless pit is the unconscious part of the mind. And the angel that rules over that bottomless pit in you, or in me, is that child that's born of the spirit that planted the seed. So either the angel ruling over the bottomless pit, which is the individual, which is the unconscious mind of the individual human being, either it's Christ Jesus in you, or it's Apollyon, who is the offspring of Zeus, whose name is also Jupiter, whose name is also Osiris, or Nimrod, or Antichrist, or Lucifer. The name of the child. Some people call him Cain. So we see that the, um, what scriptures did I give you? Oh yes, okay, so I was just going to tell you this before I went, actually went into the movie. So Apollo was the son of Zeus, and he's known as, as an archer. See the picture? He was a great archer. Apollo, a great archer. See? And we read about the archer in the scripture, Genesis 10, 9. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter of the Lord. Genesis 25, 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Proverbs 6, 5. Deliver yourself as a roe from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. So we see that Apollo is the spirit of Esau. The spirit of Esau. Now we're told that it was Esau that killed Nimrod. Isn't that interesting? It was Esau that killed Nimrod. 
Nimrod and Esau had the same spirit and they fought with each other until one prevailed because the, the, the enemy side is all divided. They're all struggling for power. But it's the same spirit that was in Nimrod that was in Esau. And so we see Esau, although it wasn't his Nimrod's direct son, he was a younger generation than Nimrod, rose up and killed the older generation, okay, just as, uh, just as uh, it was Zeus who rose up and killed his father, Cronus. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. The same spirit doing the same thing over and over again. Why? Because individual people die. They're doing it over and over again. So we see that we're dealing with the spirit of Esau, which is the same spirit that was in Nimrod. And we've had some teaching here on hunting for souls and what it means. It can mean the domination of the person. It can mean the actual consumption of the soul. Esau consumed Nimrod's soul, took his power into the next generation. There's nothing new under the sun. This is a religious. This is a religious message. All you, all you people on YouTube, that think you've been liberated from the bands of Christianity and Orthodox Judaism, you've not been liberated. You've been enslaved. You've been deceived. You've been deceived, and you have a brief moment of freedom. And you're about to be enslaved, you're already being enslaved. This message is your chance of escape. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to escape what's coming upon you and what's coming upon Christendom and the whole world. Slavery through being raped and forcibly impregnated with a spiritual child that will equip the individual to be married to the spirit of Osiris, Nimrod, Lucifer, Jupiter, Zeus, you name it. You've walked away from your marriage to Jesus Christ, or if you're Jewish, you've walked away from your marriage to Jehovah. You think that you're free, and you're about to be either raped or seduced into a marriage with an evil spirit that's birthing his child in you that will result in your utter destruction because your offspring will be a pervert and you will not be and you will be joined to that offspring it will be a perversion of a winged God and the true God the one true God Jehovah will not allow it to continue so it will be destroyed Repent now and rejoin yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ or you'll never be able to say you are at mourn. Okay, brother. I'm not going to go into the rest of this mythology. You can, you can read it yourself. Let's go on to the movie. What you have for your notes is really just a, a series of little notations that I marked out for myself to comment on. So I've introduced you to the, to the movie already. What I would like to do, uh, Brooke, I'd like to start another file because uh, the people on the internet may not want to hear all this. So now that I'm actually doing the movie, I may just put the, give them the option to just listen to the review of the movie. So I want to start another file. <laughs>